you see the Logic TV logo and this is a schematic of this logo and I created it uh, from 3D shapes and now I show how you can send this logo to Maya. And now I'm going to change the depth uh, from extrusion parameter. I choose the back option and you see our 3D object. Now I'm going to add light to make uh, this scene more interesting. And one of the powerful functions is generate geometry. You see this option in here and this transform the 3D shape to 3D geometry and it's absolutely identical to 3D shape. Okay, I start to make some animation and I do this uh, by changing the scales of our letters and when I play you see nice animation of course I copy and paste this uh, curve to every single letter and create uh, the sequential animation you see how easy it's done And here we go, it's ready. And now we need to send this scene to Maya. For that I do right click and choose send to Maya and create new scene option. And Maya automatically opens and imports the flame scene. I change the frame rate and duration and change camera to default it's flames camera in another scenario i use svg a vector file i import it in maya and you see the extruded logo you can change some parameters uh, scale it but in this case i use only to convert it to curves and you see the contoured letters. Now I'm gonna change these curves to planar surface and I do it one by one because we need each letter separately. For letter O I need to select two curves to make it look right and you see our letters are created and now time to extrude them and for that I need to select uh, all these surfaces and in modify section I use convert nerves to polygons and here we go we have five polygons time to extrude them. You can delete unnecessary uh, surfaces. I select all these five letters and extrude them. see the 3d logo of course you can send back this logo to flame and continue to work in flame okay now time to see how you can render this logo in Maya and use Arnold rendering okay I select our scene and send it to Maya. 
if I do some steps and change my frame rate, duration, camera and after that uh, we need to start to shade it. Our scene is ready and I play it. Okay, now we need to select these letters and add the material. I add Arnold standard surface and in this case I use the preset and use car paint metallic um, material and I start to render it. I hit the render and nothing happens because I need to add the light and after sky dome lighting you see everything is illuminated. Now time to color the letters and give interesting look. Uh, for that I select each one and in Arnold standard surface section change the color. This one may be to blue, this one to red, purple, I think the blue is and great. When I render you see bright, highly saturated colors. Okay, now I want to add some environment in our scene and in Skydom Light I add HDR image to add more reflections and atmosphere. Uh, on our scene. Okay, I start to render. I change my HDR image. I think this one is good. Yes, of course, you see the nice reflections of on these uh, letters. And if you want to disable the background, you need to decrease the camera uh, visibility in this parameter and you see we have black background and nice reflections on our letters and now I set the rendering parameters now I change the resolution to HD 1080 and of course you choose you can choose your own setup and in system section you can use your CPU or GPU option I stay on CPU and of course you can add your passes uh, maybe position normal Z pass or anything you want to make sure that the passes work you need to render and check the passes in here you see the percent and our render is complete I a little bit zoom it and you see the nice render here you see all rendered passes normal position, z-depth, all appears in this window. Of course, if you need to delete some passes, you need to remove it on uh, render parameters. You see these arrows, they remove the passes. Now time to render the sequence. For that we need to switch the rendering window. Ok, 
okay, and hit this icon or use batch rendering. Okay, now I import the sequence in flame and compare with action output and you see it's absolutely identical. One more interesting thing. I project this rendered image in action 3D scene and for that I use the uh, diffuse map and of course we need to change uh, the mapping option to projection and of course looks nice this is our original render and projected this gives us lots of possibilities to relighting uh, change the texture uh, and many interesting things to work in action environment and in some cases makes the compositing easier you can add many type of lights change the color add the texture i change the gain of uh, image based lighting and change the rotation you see everything works like a 3d object another interesting thing i add the displacement map and when i change the displacement i give the interesting cartoon style to our letters To get more interesting results, you can use the PBS map and use one of these options. In this case, I use height and get texture like a Python skin. Nice. If you want to at background you can use the gradient change the color of the gradient and connect to our rendered node using the mate output from our action and these two images are combined Okay, now I want to add the motion blur. And I use the Stingray motion blur node shader and connect it to uh, our action motion vector output. And when I increase the exposure time, it works perfectly. Now time to show another scene. I want to do some operation, but in this case I change the shaders type. I want to create the glass logo and I do same operations. In this case I do another animation. I animate the geometry, not the camera. And uh, maybe I add the floor and uh, create nice reflection on it. Okay, and now time to uh, add materials on these letters. I want to make the floor metallic and I use the preset uh, called chrome 
and for logo I use the glass material and start to render it. Now I want to play with colors and some parameters to make uh, this uh, glass material more realistic and interesting. Okay, when I slide the time bar, you see nice reflections, refractions and scattering. And now I want to add another environment to make my uh, reflections uh, more realistic. I use HDR uh, file, in this case uh, room. And here we go, you see very nice reflections and uh, interesting material. I a little bit increase the exposure and give more light in our scene. Okay, and change our background to black. you can play with uh, another parameters uh, change the transmission diffuse specular and another options and if you want to change uh, the lighting you can rotate your skydom uh, light and change the reflection directions And finally, you can work with your rendered uh, sequence in flame, change the colors, use passes and make interesting compositions. I think this interesting technique is useful and the connection between Maya and flame is powerful. Another topic, this topic about uh, the Chroma King and these shots are from the commercial made by me. It was all taken on Chroma Key in green screen. You see, uh, looks very natural uh, and very realistic. And I tried to preserve all the tails in hair, in the skin, and uh, preserve the shadows and highlights, make smooth edges as it would be in photography. And in source media you see uh, the same details and we need to maximal preserve them. In this work, very important to uh, get atmosphere and light according to our scenario. For example, in this one I got a great foggy wipe. And of course you see the nice movement of our camera. Now I want to show you this example and use this shot to create uh, the new scene. In this one you see our hair details is preserved. We have light, lighter and darker areas. And for this demonstration I prepared another background. More lighter. This is the schematic of my construction. This is uh, 
8K helium footage. I resize it and change the color from Loxy to HD using um, color management node. And this is the setup that you haven't seen before. The concept is the color extraction. You see this gray uh, card. I, I blend my source and uh, gray uh, and change the option to color. Separate only color. You see no Luma information. And use the mono node to extract the green channel and give this low contrast uh, mate. After that, I add the contrast. You see my color correction node. And you need to play to get the maximum precise contrast. And our uh, row mate is ready. Now time to show how you can uh, create clean plate. This is my clean plate setup. You see our source media. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add another color correction node and get extremely contrasted image. You see black and white is clipped. Don't worry about these details. I invert this mate and use the pixel spread to interpolate this image. And this technique is a useful image-based caning. Okay, second node is blur node. This is small control controller for uh, edges. And uh, you see the second here. This is the same construction from uh, previous here and this one is key the clean plate because we need to combine uh, these two mates our row mate and clean plate mate and I divide these two uh, mates and very important to clamp this output Another blur node. You can control uh, the smoothness of edges. Okay. Now you see the color source node. This is the same same uh, green uh, picked from background of our source okay you see the same green and I subtract this green plate to our clean plate and when you see uh, the output this is actually our clean plate I multiply these two outputs and finally I add to source media and get the cleanest background ever. You see when I compare these two uh, green screens you see the huge difference between these two outputs. Very nice result. I changed a little bit the exposure and you see all details preserved. We have a little difference because our background color is changed and the result is incredible. We have marker points in clean plate everything is clean. For example, I add a color correction node and do this uh, source more contrasty. And you see this uneven light. And when I compare 
to our clean image we have absolutely even background okay now we have the clean green screen and uh, time to start key this image I use same technique same uh, uh, keyer combination and add master keyer to spill image you see the result and spill image now we get more accurate uh, mate you see the output we have some noise in background and of course uh, don't worry about that it's easy to fix I uh, use uh, the neat video noise reduction for that you see I bypass it and when I uh, turn on it works great and very important to use a uh, denoiser only to mate output and not for the source node. Okay, I add the color correction uh, and get a little bit brighter our image because our background is brighter. You see the source background and uh, I add the blur node to make some defocus. Of course, many artists uh, do this technique for additive keying, and I assure you that will give you the same result. I combine uh, the spilled source media and the background and use this arrow mate and of course uh, pre-multiply the input you see the difference I can get the same as I get uh, with additive keying after all this I add the pixel spread and finally I get the pixel accurate image this is a very nice result for comparing a source and output I add uh, I copy this color correction node and connect to my source media And you see, when I toggle between two images, you see the hair details are maximum preserved. You see this semi-transparent uh, hairs. And uh, I turn on my uh, denoiser and you see a fantastic result. It's very clean background. Now I will show you the difference between uh, this technique and traditional master keyer uh, result. I add the master keyer. use my background and my corrected output okay and start to compare And when I start to toggle between these two outputs, you see the huge difference. And of course, the image based keying is best technique.
for Chroma King. Okay guys, now another part of this session, uh, part of some cleanup technique, uh, in this case I use the Silhouette plugin from Boris Affix. Now I do some color correction to get corrected look and after that uh, I want to use silhouette plugin to remove uh, the mic of these guys here you see the mics uh, under t-shirt we need to remove it I launch the silhouette paint plugin in open effect section and uh, add the name create the project and you see the interface of uh, silhouette paint this is the powerful paint module and first I'm gonna uh, switch to a roto section and track this part of t-shirt I add the square and use the tracker you see many types of uh, trackers the planner, the point tracker I use the mocha tracker this is very uh, powerful tracker and in pre-processing section you see the parameters you can blur sharp or contrast uh, the image the noise it changed the gamma i changed a little bit to get more contrasty image and uh, start to track it Okay, now track is ready. And when I hit this nice magic button, you see the stabilized image. And time to switch to paint module. In here, you have fantastic options to do your paint. And in this case, I use the clone node and start to work. In view options, you can find the fantastic options. You can change your outputs. You can see your color or detail layer. Now, time to auto paint. You see my strokes in transform section. I change to a layer. This is the track layer, and you can change the name. And uh, you see in paint model, automatically the name is changed. Make sure to check this box, select this line and start to process and you see how the silhouette paint plugin absolutely rebuilt the t-shirt and it's incredible when I finished the work I exit the plugin 
save and everything is already in flame. Now, time to compare these two outputs. I think this is a great result. Now another paint work. In this time I want to use visual effects uh, in paint model. I do the same operation. I launch the silhouette paint plugin. And create a new project. And you see these soldiers, I want to uh, change these uh, eyes uh, to red eyes, for that I start to track the first eye, this is a second soldier, and now I want to paint first eye. I use tracker, in this case most optimal is mocha tracker. This is a backward tracking, and you see our first layer start to track. And I stop uh, the track because our area is over. We need to track uh, this manually. For that, I delete unused keys and add animation. You see this. Uh, transform option and uh, we have anchor point position and scale I change the position the final final key okay I think that's good. When I play, you see our image is very stable and static. It's stabilized. And of course, after doing the same operation on the second eye, I uh, start to paint uh, the red eyes. And I do this uh, for each eye individually. Okay, now I change the color to red. And when you hit the control button and change the cursor, the size is changed. Of course, I change opacity, softness, and start my paint. to do very accurate okay after that I start to blur these uh, contours once again I use the paint and create a little gradient because I don't want it to be flat. You can do these steps as many times as you want. The silhouette paint brought new possibilities and of course you can use not only in Flame. This plugin you can use in DaVinci, in uh, After Effects and many other softwares. Now our guy becomes a cyborg. Now I add another layer and start to work on the second eye. Okay. 
Okay, now I finish the work and I start to prepare to auto trick, auto paint. Firstly, I process first eye. I change the tracker to my B1 and start to match move. And you see how the silhouette paint frame by frame analyzes and rebuilds the painted work and after the processing I enjoy this rendered image really cool result now time to send back in flame and I play it in flame smoothly You see the difference and of course another cool thing uh, you can use the alpha information from the silhouette and of course you can use the brushed or uh, painted uh, alpha output and use it on your compositing works now the demonstration when I add the color correction knot and connect to alpha output you can change your color separately from image you can add the blur add the motion blur or anything uh, what you want now time to show how you can clean up uh, and make some beauty forks now I want to show how you can use this plugin on timeline. In this case I use the timeline affix and start to clean this scar. The silhouette paint is very powerful uh, for this kind of work. I create the tracker. I take big area of this cheek because the girl is moving her head and we have some deformations uh, when the stabilize the image i use this all in parameters and start to track you see mocha tracker has done incredible job start to track backward and our track is ready good job now time to use the paint and in this case i start uh, use the clone node and you can use color information details information to clone uh, paint or blur your object and this is the new algorithm and uh, let's give the fantastic result i think that's enough for demonstration and it's very good result again i uh, select my layer and you see the paint i change my transform parameter and start to match move and now see the difference and use this technique and the, finally I want to show you some paint some artworks uh, in this case I use flames paint and uh, some matchbox shaders to create this nice uh, scene this is for upcoming project by Anisha Rambeyan and uh, uh, this will be an, anim an animation uh, film you see this drawing it's done uh, fully on flame paint node and I start to show you how I create this effect this is my schematic view and you see how many interesting tools I use on this project 
with some separate nodes, uh, blend and many other tools. And each of these tools has an important role. Okay, this is the matchbox shader created by Ivar. And you see nice uh, watercolor effect. And I separate these two, three channels and start to blend it with uh, these image channels. This mix uh, gives us more depth to our uh, work and gives us more variations to manipulate uh, with colors. In some cases I invert the uh, output and mix to another channels and all these I do for creating this nice combination after that I start to use the pixel spread node and create the watercolor uh, effect you see how I use the parallax in pixel spread and of course this is one of the main tools to create this effect and uh, the second pixel spread node uh, I change the animation and make a little bit different portion of distortion and some other tools to make interesting creative artistic look and every this uh, output is mixed to main uh, image and create incredible nice paint effect Now you see the nice texture of uh, paper, uh, this part of uh, construction is canvas part and I add some title, I create the title effect. Of course this effect, uh, effect is uh, watercolored too. change my uh, duration because we need to have 125 frame okay I mix some uh, stylized note to my fonts to my uh, letters and create this interesting effect Finally, you see how the letters is mixed uh, into paper. And when I blend these two uh, outputs, we get very, very nice uh, artistic look. You see the color correction note? A little bit change the hue. And actually this is the result. Okay, after that you can add many more effects, uh, post effects. I hope this demonstration was useful and you enjoyed it. Thank you guys.